Can you explain? Because I'm a bit confused. John three three to three eight. Oh yes. The I way did. that the way I've always taken it has been he's talking uh, born again of very specifically here born again of water and the spirit. I've always taken that to be baptism. Yes, you're right. It is baptism. Let me give you an article I wrote, uh, and I'll prove it to you. It's baptism in a minute. I did a okay. session on John 3, being born again. Is it water baptism? And I showed contextually it is, but here's where people are going to have an issue. If you read the writings of the church fathers, the disciples of the apostles and their followers after them, did you know that the unanimous teaching is John 3, verse 5, is water baptism? And did you know that the church universally, universally believed that water baptism was a means through which God gave you the Holy Spirit? To cause you to be born again and unite you to Christ. And here's an article to prove it. I'm going to give it to you. Here's the article, guys. This is on my blog. I got all the citations I could from the latter part of the first century, second century, third century, fourth century. You're going to find the unanimous. Hey, get Muhammad Ibn Dawud out of here. I don't want you here. Get out of here, dude. Get this guy out of here. Don't come back, Muhammad. You can keep your Jesus because you're a fake. Get the hell out of here, little little bastard. Uh, my Jesus would say that. Maybe your mother would. Right, stinking bastard, spiritual bastard. Sorry, guys. May the Lord Jesus give me constraint. I have to watch for the sake of kids. Forgive me, children. You're gonna meet dogs like this. You got a muzzle, but forgive me. My Jesus wouldn't do that. The get go to hell. Your Jesus wouldn't do that. As if your Jesus is the real Jesus. <laughs> Son of a whisker. Sorry about that, buddy. Anyway, let me no, give you. No, that's fine. Yeah. Jesus what a, what, a, what an Jesus. arrogant satanic thing to say. What a satanic air. My Jesus, well, you stupid little demonic bastard, you have a fake Jesus then, not the real Jesus. Anyway, get this guy out of here. Now, for the rest of you, I just gave you the link. I gave you the link. The unanimous teaching, brother, is water baptism is used by the Spirit to cause you to be born again and unite you to Christ so you can receive forgiveness of sins. This is one teaching you'll find that all Christians universally believed. You will not find Christians disagreeing with this. And you'll find that when Christians commented in John 3, 5, they all took water baptism to be, I'm sorry, they all took water to be water baptism. And I just gave okay, you the link. That's, that, that's what I thought. I just wanted to be sure because I had someone um, the other day who was very confused on that. And I was like, look, this is clearly water baptism. Like, there's no way exactly. this can't be. It just logically, it didn't make sense. So I wanted to check with you. Yeah. And one of the proofs, sure. one of the strongest proofs that's referring to water baptism. Did you know of the four gospels, the only writer that mentions that Jesus baptized people in water is the gospel of John. Cause now read for me. If you can read John three, five real quickly for me. John 3, 5. So, guys, if you want to go against the church fathers when they're unanimous, and it's in the creed, by the way. So as he goes there, before you read it, let me make this point. I'm not saying church fathers are infallible, but neither are you, neither is William Lane Craig, neither is James White, neither am I. So you Protestants who want to just ignore the church fathers, here's the question you're going to need to answer. When you have the church fathers unanimously believing in something, and then codifying it in the creed. It's in the Nicene Creed, by the way. In the Nicene Creed, it says, I believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. When the church universally, unanimously, when it's a unit, when they're in agreement before the schism, agrees that water baptism is what God uses to bring about the grace of the Holy Spirit to unite you to Christ, make you alive, and <clears throat> grant you forgiveness of sins, then you're either going to have to say all these church fathers got it so wrong so early and Jesus didn't protect them from such a false teaching. Or you're going to have to say that since Jesus didn't abandon his church, he guided his church to believe this. And so it must be true, which is why the Lord allowed the church universally to believe this. Do you know that? Even Martin Luther believed it. So don't tell me, oh, they're church fathers. They're not infallible as if you're infallible and your mother's infallible. Poor mothers, man. I keep attacking mothers. What is it about me? <laughs> But anyway, read John 3, verse 5. Okay. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay, so you got to be born of water and Spirit. Now, uh -huh. contextually, you can prove just from the context, water means water baptism. Let me prove it to you. Go to John 3, 22. After Jesus finishes speaking to Nicodemus, what does he do? John 3, 22. 
After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the land of Judea. There he remained with them and baptized. Oh, wow. The only gospel oh writer. Gosh. You got, you I missed it? that. Okay, guys, pay attention. I missed that. I want everyone to pay attention to this. The only writer that mentioned Jesus baptizing is John. And he mentioned Jesus doing so right after telling Nicodemus you must be born of water and spirit. Now read John 3, 26. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. You got it now. Finally, John 4, verses 1 and 2. Not Jesus being baptized. Jesus baptizing Sonia. Yeah, yes. Baptizing, now I'm talking to yes. her because uh, Sonia, it's Jesus baptizing people in water. Not that he got baptized. He's baptizing people in water. Because now notice who, who's actually doing the baptism for Jesus. John 4 verses 1 or 2. Now when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples uh, than John... Although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples. Did you catch it? So when it says Jesus baptized, it means that he told the disciples to baptize, dip people in water on my behalf, those who come to me. So again, it's not a coincidence that after Jesus tells Nicodemus he must be born of water and spirit, he goes on and has the disciples dip people in water in preparation for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. And that article I gave you will give you more, much more meat than I can. What's your other okay. question, my brother? Feel free to ask me. Go ahead. Do you have any more? So I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I could be wrong about this. If you know, that'd be great. Uh, yes, Igor. Before you go on, brother, real quickly. Igor, yes. There was what they call ritual bathing. For example, the Jews that wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, some believe they're called the Essenes. They lived in isolation from Jerusalem and the temple because they thought the temple was corrupted. These men committed themselves to celibacy, and they have ritual bathing, mikvah, ritual baths. So every day they would go and bathe. It's called It was mikvah, ritual bathing, ritual baths, mikvah. So this was something that was being observed by the Jews before Jesus' ministry. In fact, some people actually think John the Baptist picked it up from these Jews. Why? Because John the Baptist was living in the wilderness. Well, who lived in the wilderness? The, the Jews that produced the Dead Sea Scrolls. So I hope that answered your question. But go ahead, brother. 